just like we communicate with each other using cell phone, WhatsApp, etc., neurons in our brain communicate with each other by an electrical signal known as action potential or spikes. Now, if you're watching this video, the visual input is going into your brain, making your neurons of your eyes the optical track to fire, and that information is relayed to the higher higher cortex where the visual information is processed and if you're also listening to me then your auditory neurons are firing and sending this information to your auditory cortex so neurons spikes that means the spike is action potential which is nothing but a change in voltage over time so the change is from resting membrane potential to a positive membrane potential of plus 30 millivolt this delta change in voltage about 100 millivolt change in voltage is known as the action potential. So question is whether we can measure the action potential from the uh, new neurons or not. It turns out we can use electrophysiological methods to measure the action potentials and that could tell us about various biophysical properties of the neuron including capacitance, conductance, firing frequency, input resistance and firing pattern. A combination of all of these biophysical parameters can tell about several aspects of the neuronal physiology and how the neuron is coding for the information which would be decoded in the higher brain center. Now here is a typical patch clamp setup with a microscope and you can see with the microscope there is a camera attached by which you can real-time image the neuron from where you are recording. There are setups for a uh, electrode stimulating and recording electrode which are held in position by micro manipulators and you have a bunch of amplifiers several power supplies etc etc and a screen where the recording is displayed so here is an even closer view of that rig where you can see the micro manipulators is holding the patch electrodes so these electrodes are recording electrodes you could have another from another side you could have a stimulating electrode which would give current inputs so now this is the stripped down version of the uh, patch clamp setup so most important part is this uh, recording electrode which is connected to the amplifier because these currents or voltage whatever it is recorded is minuscule so it has to be amplified in order to detect and that goes to a data acquisition system and goes to a computer which which displays the recording in real time now the first and foremost criteria of the patch clamp is to establish a patch so how to establish a patch in a patch clamp method the electrode is uh, poured down towards the cell membrane and gentle suction is applied once the suction is proper the membrane resistance would increase and reach in order of one giga ohm we call it giga ohm seal and let's see how to understand whether giga ohm seal is established or not this seal is important because if its seal is not proper then there would be ion leakage and the proper recording won't be happening so first of all when you are approaching with your electrode towards the neuron you you use a positive pressure and you inject a small current so you would definitely get a linear response a small change in voltage as well now what you would do when you just reach and about to establish a giga ohm seal then you inject the same amount of current if the giga ohm seal or resistance is so high in order of giga ohm then the recorded voltage deflection would be very very low because your resistance is in order of giga ohms now gentle suction can break open the membrane of the cell and thereby you would see a small capacitive transients which results due to the discharging of the capa membrane capacity so and thereby you can understand a proper giga ohm seal was established and now the inside of the pipette and the inside of the cell is continuous this configuration is one of the important configuration and most used configuration in electrophysiology known as whole cell recording if we talk about whole cell recording which is a subgroup of patch clamp techniques then wholesale recording could be used or operated in two modes one is voltage clamp mode another is current clamp mode each has its own unique advantages using a voltage clamp mode you can 
keep the voltage constant so the voltage parameter is in your hand you can keep the voltage constant or in other terms you can hold the voltage at cert certain millivolts and measure the currents whereas in the current clamp mode you can keep the current constant and measure the change in voltages so when you need to record the action potentials which is basically delta change in voltage you use a current clamp configuration so a current clamp mode under wholesale recording so and when you need to record the currents the ionic currents then voltage clamp method is important now voltage clamp method or this overall patch clamp method has several variants so let me discuss briefly about them so first of all one variant is called a cell attached recording when you establish the giga ohm seal but doesn't break the membrane so single macroscopic and microscopic currents could be recorded in this configuration the second configuration is the whole cell configuration and most used configuration where the inside of the pipette and the inside of the cell membrane is in equilibrium and they are like continuous so in this configuration we can record properties like action potential and macroscopic currents etc etc now two other variants which are pretty interesting and important for specific application for example inside out recording in inside out recording the inside out recording configuration could be achieved by simply pulling your pipette apart when the giga ohm seal is uh, uh, when the giga ohm seal is uh, present so that would create a patch of the membrane to be detached from the neuron now since the inside of the ion channels is now exposed to the environment you can study the properties of several molecules and how they regulate this channel conductance so that is the utility of this inside out recording now the outside out recording is another important thing so in a wholesale configuration if you pull the pipette backward then a portion of the membrane is going to be retracted and it would be rejoined and now the outside of the ion channels or outside of the membrane is exposed to the environment now that could be dipped into several solution maybe this kind of configuration would be very useful to study role of uh, several neurotransmitter on channel conductances so all these kind of several variant of patch clamp techniques has its own advantages and disadvantages but one of the most used one is the wholesale patch clamp recording that can be operated in either voltage clamp mode or in current clamp mode now let's say in a whole wholesale configuration you inject a negative current and you would get first capacitive small currents and when it reaches the threshold it would start firing action potential and you can nicely represent this data in form of injected current and voltage and plot a iv relationship remember when you are going towards more depolarized you are giving more depolarizing current it is giving rise to your uh, action potential but why do you want to inject a hyperpolarized current it is important to step increase the current because in the hyperpolarizing side you can calculate one important biophysical property known as input resistance which would tell you how your how much leakiness is in the membrane or how how and also that parameter is important because depending upon input resistance it tells us that how much uh, the neuron is likely to fire or how easy for the neuron is to generate an action potential so these parameters i would be discussing in other videos so but wha what is the importance of this action potential it turns out that our brain is a decoder of these action informations inside these action potentials and it turns out let's say a spider is trying to bite you and you are getting freaked out and your fear neurons are firing like hell so after the time there could be changes in inside these neurons which would change in biophysical properties of the neuron or conductive properties of the neuron let's say you seen the spider for the second time and somebody is able to record from your brain then you would see a potentiated response your whole firing rate versus input current curve would shift leftward in simplest word that same amount of current is now given a heightened response or a potentiated response so that's why these properties about action potential firing firing frequency firing rate can give us can tell us so much about how our brain can function not only that 
it turns out the information about sensory environment is decoded by the firing rate inside our brain for example the information about the odor intensity or odor quality which is present in our environment is actually decoded by the olfactory neurons in the higher brain olfactory uh, higher brain center neurons by its uh, firing rate so firing rate and firing pattern in real time it turns out the odors which are very similar have very similar firing trains so that is in interesting so the not only the amplitude of action potential but the frequency of the uh, action potential the the interspike interval of the action potential carry a huge amount of information about neuronal coding so that is pretty interesting so if you like my video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe and keep on watching these whole video series where i would be describing several electrophysiological properties and how they are relevant for neuron to work and how that could be interesting for coding sensory modalities thank you